is a prayer motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III encourages us to pray without ceasing throughout the day, every day, for the glory of God. Welcome to another prayer motivator devotional broadcast. Broadcast number 219. As always, it is so good to be with you today to encourage you to pray uh, in these difficult days. Today I would like to begin by sharing with you a poem titled The Healing That We Need by M.S. Lowndes. Why, O oh Lord, does it seem that we often get no reply when we are so very desperate for all the answers why? When we need a special touch to heal all of our sickness, a miracle that only you can do, restoring strength to our weakness. We do not know the reasons why you don't answer straight away. We only need to have faith in you and be persistent when we pray. You may choose to heal much more than our needs of the physical. So much more is the spirit inside that may be in need of a miracle. For you care so much for us and want to see us healed, not only in this body of ours, but in our souls as well. For healing is for every part, our body, spirit, and soul. And God just wants to touch each part and make us truly whole. We needn't feel so downcast as we wait upon the Lord for the answer will come in his time, then we shall be restored. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, the simple purpose of this broadcast is to motivate, encourage, and exhort you to pray. This radio broadcast is not necessarily for people who are mature in the Lord and who already know the secret and power of prayer and who actually practice genuine prayer on a regular basis. Rather, it is for those who may find it difficult to pray or for people who claim that uh, they do not have time to pray. I am convinced that most Christian people do not need to learn how to pray if they have been saved for a while. They need to just pray. They need to just pray. If I can get you, motivate you, encourage you to just pray, I believe all sorts of wonderful things will begin to happen for you your family, and whatever God has called you to do. We do not pray based upon our subjective feelings. We pray based upon objective facts in the Word of God. Our prayer motivator verse from the Word of God today is Philippians 4.6 which reads, Be careful for nothing, 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Allow me to share with you some key points regarding this uh, powerful and important verse from Matthew's, Matthew Henry's commentary. He says in his famous commentary, here is a caution against disquieting, perplexing worry and care. Be careful for nothing. In other words, don't worry about anything. The same expression that Matthew uh, chapter 6 verse 25 says, Take no thought for your life. That is, avoid anxious care and distracting thought in the wants and difficulties of life. Observe it is the duty and interest of Christians to live without care. There is a care of diligence which is our duty and consists in a wise forecast and due concern, but there is a care of diffidence and distrust which is our sin and folly, and which only perplexes and distracts the mind. Be careful for nothing, so as by your care to distrust God. Uh, please get that, folks. Be careful for nothing, so as by your care and worry you distrust God, and unfit yourselves for His service and for his blessings. As a sovereign antidote against perplexing care, he recommends to us constant prayer. Did you get that, dear friend? As a sovereign antidote against perplexing care, he recommends to us constant prayer. Observe, we must not only keep up stated times for prayer, but we must pray upon every particular emergency. We must join thanksgiving with our prayers and supplications. Prayer is the offering up of our desires to God or making them known to Him, and the effect of this will be the peace of God keeping our hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, our prayer motivator quote today is from Oswald Chambers. He said, Jesus Christ carries on intercession for us in heaven. The Holy Ghost carries on intercession in us on earth, and we, the saints, have to carry on intercession for all men. Wow, what a blessing. Our prayer motivator devotional today is the fifth and final part of our series titled Why Prayer Should Be Definite from Dr. John R. Rice, that great prince of prayer years gone by, and his book, Prayer Asking and receiving. He goes on to write, Elijah went around for years with the key of heaven in his pocket. God had given him such assurance that he could announce to the king in 1 Kings 17 1. Uh, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. 
this knowing exactly what you want and asking for it, demanding it, expecting it, and uh, demanding in the sense of reverence, uh, in, in, in a reverent way, a humble way, uh, I'm sure he is referring to, uh, and knowing that it is the perfect will of God to give it, seems to be God's will for Christians. For Isaiah 45, 11 says, Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his Maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Blessed is the Christian, he goes on to say, who is so in the will of God, who so knows the mind of God, who has such definite desires that concerning the work of God, he can command God, ask of God, expect of God, and have exactly what he asks for. Now, friend, it is time for us to pray. Remember, the announcer will provide the information for you to send in your prayer request at the end of this broadcast. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us to be specific and definite uh, in our prayer life to uh, have that kind of strong faith in you. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would grant everyone your grace and your strength and the power of your Holy Spirit to pray to you effectively today and each and every day of their uh, of our lives. Lord, we individually confess our own sins and faults unto you. Lord, for Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins and fill us afresh and anew with the fullness and the power of your Holy Spirit. To do your work and to do your will, Lord, today I pray for every person who's praying with me. They multiply thousands, Lord, who are on our prayer lists. And uh, we pray, Lord, your blessings upon each soul today. And Lord, we pray for every church leader, every pastor, every missionary around the world to stand for you. Lord, grant them your fresh anointing this morning to do your will and your work. And Holy Father God, we also pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Lord, for the President of these United States and uh, also for all governmental officials in this country and around the world, that you would save them, bless them, lead them, guide them, and direct them in the way that you want them to go. Give them your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding uh, to do your will and not theirs, that we may lead peaceful lives. Now, Lord, we pray for three people who have sent in prayer requests. Lord, we pray uh, we have chosen these three uh, out of thousands. We pray, Lord, specifically for Steve in Austin, Texas. Uh, we pray that you'll help his friend Lauren to open up and speak to him. I have both him and uh, Lauren to find jobs and be able to move near each other. We pray, Lord, for Edwin in uh, Serimban, Malaysia. Have him to stop his uh, um, issues that he has with others and return to his family as soon as possible. 
Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for Gary in Uniondale, New York, have his unsaved loved ones to accept Christ, bring health and healing to his landlord, George, have his soul mate, Alyssa, to have a much closer walk with Jesus and help them to uh, get married and have a family. Bless his finances and give him and his family protection. And Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We uh, pray for the following people who have uh, accepted you into their hearts, received you into their hearts, have, uh, trusted you for salvation through our ministry here at Gospel Light Society. And Lord, we pray that you would bless them. We pray that you would strengthen them in the faith, encourage them in the faith, fill them with your Holy Spirit, teach them your word, and uh, Lord, uh, help them to be the strong Christians that you want them to be. Help us to walk alongside them uh, uh, in prayer and in discipleship ministry uh, for as long as you want us to. And, uh, and uh, Lord, we count it a joy to be a small part of your great universal work. We pray specifically for Erica in Jamaica, Ida in Bakasi, Indonesia, and Naresh Babu in India as well. Now, Lord, we also pray for the following people who have uh, been Christians for a while, but who have been led by you to rededicate their lives to you. We rejoice with these in this decision, and we pray that they will keep their commitments to you and be strengthened in the faith. We pray, Lord, for Melissa, uh, in, in here in the States, we pray for Nalia uh, in Leeds, uh, the United Kingdom, and Tiffany in Garland, Texas. We thank you, Lord, for uh, leading these folks to come back to you and to be all that they should be. Uh, for your glory, praise, and honor. And we pray that you'd use them to see more souls come to know your Savior. And, uh, and see more lives changed. We pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, in closing, if you are listening to this broadcast and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, friend of mine, if you're willing to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior today, Understand that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's right, God loves you if you're in this world. God loves you so much he sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for your sins, so that you would not perish in hell but have everlasting life in heaven with God. And all you have to do is believe on him. Trust in Jesus Christ. Receive him into your heart, and he will save your soul and change your life forever. Are you willing to believe on him today? If so, Pray with me right now. Just repeat this prayer after me a minute from your heart, phrase by phrase. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner. I realize that I'm not perfect. I realize that I have broken your laws. 
for Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life forever. Amen. Dear friend, if you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior, please contact us today so that we can send you a free copy of our pamphlet titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. This will help you get started in your Christian life. Until next time, dear friend, remember, pray, think, do. God bless you.